we are at Chester's Roman Fort, just outside Hexham, on the North River Tyne. We are part of the Hadrian's Wall. Part of Hadrian's Wall. Because the fog in the tank is all mine, all mine. The fog in the tank is all mine. The fog in the tank is all mine, all mine. The fog in the tank is all mine. Shall we go exploring? We shall, we shall. We shall. We're going to save the museum till last. Um, but this is part of our English Heritage membership. And we're going to have a look and see what we can see of this fort, which formed an important part of the defences against those pesky Scots, <coughs> keeping them out um, at the North River Tyne, where the wall crossed the River Tyne. Yeah, mm. it's been here for almost 300 years. Um, a lot longer than that, Caroline. A lot longer <laughs> than that. <laughs> but it says it was an important part of the frontier for almost 300 years. So Adrian ruled, AD 117 to 138, 117 to 138. And this is Adrian's Wall here. So it started off at Carlisle, although from there, all the way along the Wall's End. And we're going to go to Segaduna, which, which is at Wall's End. But we are here at Chester's. We're going to have a look at Corbridge at, uh, at some point, which is a nice little village. But that's what it would have looked like. So this is the wall crossing the River Tyne, and we're going to show you that in a second. And this is what the fort would have been, and all the villages and, and farmland. So this was the frontier, Hadrian's frontier? Well, it was just a fort to protect the crossing. This is what it looks like now. There's lots of farmland. There's a horse over there and some sheep and some cows. But it's a very beautiful countryside. And it's a nice warm day as well. We've found these things, which we don't know what they're called, but they're pretty impressive because if you look through, that's what you would have seen in front of you. It's quite good. But we're going to look at the ruins now, which were... This fort was abandoned once the Romans left Britain. Never, it was never used, never turned into a town or anything like that, unlike places like Newcastle. So it's had to be archaeologically found. Yeah. Here's a question, guys. In Horrible Histories, the movie, Rotten Romans, after the Romans invade Britain, they find themselves coming up against a, fem a famous female leader who has united the Celts. What's her name? Cleopatra? Octavia? Or Queen Boudicca? Or Boudicca? Boudicca. But we've made it to the front entrance that we just saw on that thing, whatever that was called. So this would have been the gatehouse, just here. This is what they've unearthed. I'm now standing in what is, or was, the west tower of the northern gatehouse. It's quite a small tower and I would imagine that it went up high and there'll be lots of like spiral staircases, because we know how in those olden days they loved the spiral staircase. Then we'll go along this middle section, just really a wall, and then they built drainage. So this was to drain all of the flooding, you can see it's slightly sloped. And that would take all of the water away from what would have been on this field, and we'll, we'll walk over to this section in a second, but all along this field here would have been behind walls, and that was the barracks where the Roman soldiers would would live while they worked here. And this is over to the East Tower. But all of this middle section, especially the drain piece, this was actually built at a later stage. It wasn't built when the two towers were built. They were built first. About 100 years later, they came along. The next set of Romans built all of the drainage. So we've come to another part of Chester's and another question. The month of July is named after a Roman emperor, but which one? A. Nero, B. Caligula and C. Julius Caesar. And I don't know where Sean's gone. Oh, there he is in the distance. All of this land was bought many years ago by John Clayton, who owned part of Clayton Street. And he dug it all up because he was really interested. And then he ended up buying more of Hadrian's wall, etc. Which part's this, Sean? We're going to go down. So this is one of the barracks and some more drainage, just here. This is one of the barracks where the soldiers would, would live. Um, and they'd actually live with their horses, so you'd have one of these would be horses and then beside it you'd have the troops 
they would live there. So like three men would live in the rear of each compartment with the horses right in the front. So the horses up here and the troopers all the way at the barrack. Um, there'd be about 500 men and the horses all here. And this is just one of the barracks and they'd go all the way along here. So you can see in these, there's, there's not a lot of space really because the horses would take up most of it. This is just a small example of those stables and barracks, but 500 men, that all also need 500 horses. Can you imagine that, of food that would be needed for all of those horses? And the amount of land for the horses to graze as well, because they can't stay in the stable, so you've got all this land around. But food-wise, they'd need almost as much as I eat. We've made it over to the eastern gate in two towers, which would have been the turrets with the, the section in the middle to get through the gate to that area over there. Um, it's interesting, when John Clayton started excavating all of this with his archaeologi archaeologists, um, he found that the fort wasn't actually attached to the Roman wall. They built the fort after they built the wall, which is quite interesting. Another one from the Horrible Histories. Rich Romans loved their food, but they didn't use knives and forks to eat. They just used their hands. What did they do to show they had enjoyed their meal? A. Say thank you. B. Sacrifice a goat. Or C. Burp. Burp. <laughs> you reckon it's burp, do you? Absolutely. How else do you say that food was delicious? Apart yeah. from burping. Did after you've eaten a goat. Do what? what, what? Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> and where are we now? The West Gate. We're at the western gate now. I suppose we're going to look at the southern gate in a second. But again, one tower, two towers, and the entrance way in the middle. So as Sean was saying we're at the west gate. Now, like what I was saying before about John Clayton, who was a famous lawyer up here. Um, he inherited the large house, which Sean said is actually right at the back. So while he was sitting in his front room and lounge and parlour or, or whatever rooms that he had in his house just there, he'd look down this way and he saw some ruins and it really got him excited so he started using his large wealth to excavate Chester's, all of this, and buy up other parts of the Roman Adrian's wall. Yep. And underneath all of here there are lots more barracks that haven't been excavated yet. We've made it over to the headquarters building, which was the most important building in a Roman fort. So this would be this building here. We'll go in in a second, have a little, a little bit more of a look. Um, but it contained um, the religious ceremonies, all of the records of the Roman fort as well, like the shrine, the office, the hall, um, a phallic symbol. What's a phallic symbol, Caroline? A charm to protect the garrison from evil. Yeah. Um, and although Chester's was a military frontier, did you know? that it was also modelled with those headquarters. A little bit like a Roman town. It was. It's like it, a public forum. Yep, it's like a centre for community life. Yeah. Otherwise known as the Principia. Well, I hope you're enjoying this little trip back to the Roman times with us today. Um, if you like this kind of video, subscribe if you're not already subscribed. Leave a comment down below if you like this kind of video and um, we'll go and see more places like this. So this was the heart of the fort and it's where the most important ceremonies took place. And all of these rooms here. But I think we've got another horrible histories question. So Roman punishments could be really nasty. If you killed your father you'd be tied up in a sack with an angry dog and a lobster and then thrown in the river. But what was a more common punishment in Roman times? Cooking dinner for the emperor? Fighting lions in an amphitheatre? Or being rolled down a mountain? Leave your answers down below. Did you know I used to love a good bath? I could do with a bath now after walking up, walking all around here. Have I'm you gonna push you back up that hill. You do. Have you ever been to a Roman bath before? 
No, but one day we're going to go and visit Bath. This is a Roman bathhouse. This is the most well-preserved Roman bathhouse in the whole of the UK. It is, yeah. Right next to the River Tyne, which is flowing along just nicely. Oh, we've got another question for you. The Romans had pretty good toilets, but they didn't use toilet paper. What did they use instead? Sponge on a stick, bricks or mud? Oh. Oh. I was going to say leaves, but it's not an option. So mud then? I suspect sponge How would you know that it's finished? Because it's the same colour. Sponge on a stick. Sponge on a stick. Did they have sponges in Roman times? No, I'm just taking a guess. But let's head down to the River Tyne. That was the Stoke Hall. Do you know what a Stoke Hall is? I haven't made it out of the river yet. And I'm getting warm, I think I need a bath. So this room is on top of that Stoke and this was a hot dry room. This was dry heat. And then there's another room just through there. But all of these would act like, but like a stoner or a steam room, steam room in modern days. Before you head it down into this hot steam room. So you go through each room. And this would be a hot steam room here. And then you'd have wet heat. So it's not really about having a bath, it's more about getting hot and steamy and you'd sit in there and get yourself all steamy, ready to get clean, get all that dirt out of your pores. And then you'd have to be very short, but you'd go through there. And I believe that this is the bath, but we'll find out. Does anybody know what this is? It's a latrine. Oh, and then I need to climb up here. I'm just going to put the camera down. This would be the cold bath. Then a later cold bath. That's me nice and clean. A lot of these bricks and stones here would have made a bridge, if I use my finger, so the bridge would have went like that, because that there is Adrian's wall coming over this way to the north, to the west and there would have been a bridge that would have looked something like this with the Roman soldiers there. So they built this around 122 AD when the foundations of the wall were still being laid down but it was only a footbridge um, and it probably got washed away. Um, so if you want to, this is a close-up photo of the walls there. Um, and this is where it crossed the river. Arrived at the East Gate. Sean's just gone in. So, John Clayton didn't excavate everything, nor I've did... I've walked 500 miles. And you'll walk 500 more. So as I was saying, John Clayton didn't excavate the entire fort, um, and he didn't record everything about it either. Did you know, Sean? Did you know that Chester has two gates in, instead of the traditional four? It's got four gates. It, I just looked at them. Oh no, no, sorry, two extra gates I meant to say. You're struggling a bit. We've looked at them. It's got six. Has it? Yes. It's got two extra. Where are the extras? Well. Nobody's found them. I don't know. I'll have to have a check of all of this. So, you know the bath that you were in just before? Yeah, I had a nice wash, but I need another one because I'm sweating. Well, d did you know that they found, I think it was 30, 30 odd bodies? 32 bodies. But they, they disappeared without a trace? Ghosts. Don't know where they went to. Ghosts. You're saying I was having a bath with ghosts? But what I don't... You could well have been having a bath with ghosts. Ghostly and spooky goings on. This looks a bit stony. Walled. Ha. <laughs> North East Tower. See, another tower. 
Another gate. With a slightly curved wall. Yeah. No. Yeah. One thing you'll find here is it's quite bumpy. There's no actual pathway, so Sean's having to push me around on This is the interval grass. tower. This is the interval tower. Oh. I wonder what the next one is. Whoa, is we've it? made our way to the south gate, but we've seen lots of gates and they all look the same. But out here, that was a civilian settlement. Otherwise, that sprang known, up. otherwise known as a vicus. Yeah. So people lived here, they settled here. So there was, I think we've got some, there's some pieces from that settlement in the museum that we're going to have a look at in a minute. Yeah. They also found a cemetery. They did, yeah. They found tombstones beside the river, so they suspect there's a cemetery. You can't see them when you're walking, but supposedly if you look up above from an aerial shot down over, you'll see them better. You can actually work it out properly. If only we had a drone. Off to the tea room we go, because Sean is thirsty. Let's see what Sean comes back with from Chester's tea room. It's very pretty around here. And once he's had his drink, we're going into the museum, yeah. which is right there. And the wanderer returns. What's he got? Do you reckon he's got a scone as usual? Or cheesecake? I bet five pounds he's got cheesecake. He's got cake of some sort, but I don't know if it's cheesecake. It's not. What is flapjack. it? It's flapjack. Apple and blackcurrant. Flapjack. I said, I bet he's either got cheesecake or a scone. And I said, I bet five pounds it's cheesecake. But it wasn't, but it's cake. Apple and blackcurrant flapjack with yogurt on the top. That's it. Ah. And a nice cold Coke Zero. That's a bit of a hit on that, Sean. <laughs> That's badly poured. Fine, it's not a beer. Well, what a swallow. Thirsty, thirsty much, Pep? Yep. To the museum we're going. It's a war guard show. Thank you. This one's a hand mill. Oh, it smells funny in here. <sighs> Bit cheeky. than I actually thought it was. There's quite a lot to see, even though it's all on the ground and, and excavated that way rather than a pie. But <clears throat> quite interesting, I found, actually. It was. Really enjoyed that. I, lo I love stuff like that, Sean, not so much. But it was good that they had all the horrible histories in as well, which was good fun. Yeah. Lots of things for the kids to do as well. So you could Excuse take like little me. quizzes and puzzles and bless you when it comes. <laughs> um, and when you went in the museum, there was a little um, slab that you could put on all those stones and it would tell you more about them. So quite an interesting um, if stony museum 
But that's Roman, uh, Chester's Roman Fort, just outside Hexham. Come and check it out. Um, the quite often got events on like Roman reenactments and, and things like that so we might come back and see one of those the next time they're on. Yeah I think they're having um, other horrible histories events as well. Yeah so thank you very much for watching I hope you liked it. Keep making memories. Catch you later.